when I left CIA, I didn't really know what I was going to do. I left for family reasons yeah. because I had my first child. My wife and I were both CIA officers. CIA basically put us, they had a conversation with us where they were like, hey, you're going to have to choose between being CIA officers or being parents. Not like they're going to get rid of our kid, but it's yeah, basically yeah. like, you're not going to be home because you're going to be operating or you are going to be home and you're not going to be operating. But they were like, this is the way it works. And this is the way it's always worked at CIA. Well, this is 2014. My wife and I are both uh, 34 years old with our first child and we want to have a second child. And we were just of the first generation that basically heard that offer. And we were kind of like, well, then fuck you guys. We're out. And like when we left in 2014, CIA had really never seen that before. People who leave mid-career because they started having a family was unfamiliar to them. Their, the attrition rate prior to 2014 was like in the low 2%. It was like 1.8%, 1.6%. Very few people ever left CIA. And when they did leave, it was because they were retiring. And then they went through what was called a revolving door. Retire on Friday, come back in on Monday as a contractor working for some big contract company. That was basically how people would retire. So they were not accustomed to mid-career successful professionals just leaving. What's the point of becoming a contractor? What's the difference? Like, like $60,000 a year. You get paid more or less. You get paid a ton more. You get paid a ton more. This is, do you remember when Donald Trump, when he took office in uh, yeah. 2016, for like two years after that, he tried, he tried to start taking security clearances from anybody who wasn't in government? Do you remember that? Yeah. He was 100% right. Because what happens is you don't make very much money in the federal government. And when I say you don't make very much money, what I mean is like a senior intelligence specialist or an SIS officer might be making maybe $210,000 a year after a 30-year career. Well, shit, dude. Like, you know how many 28-year-old salespeople are making $250,000 a year right now? Like... You know, twenty year olds that have made a million dollars a month sit in that seat. Exactly, <laughs> like, exactly, yeah. right? So after after a full year of servicing the government for two hundred and ten thousand being your greatest salary ever, you have these super high secrecy or you have the super high clearance, you have a huge network of peers at CIA, at FBI, at, at DOD and DIA, at NSA, and abroad with the Israelis and with the French, and with the Germans, and with the British. Like, you have this giant mm -hmm. network. Well, a corporate for-profit company wants access to that network. Mm. Your Booz Allen Hamiltons, and your Raytheons, and your gotcha. Khakis. Gotcha, I see what you mean. Okay. Right? Yeah, so yeah. then they'll come in, and they'll, they'll make offers to the retirees, and then the retiree will step out on Friday without being an employee for CIA anymore, sign on with Khaki, or sign on with Booz Allen Hamilton, or, or Raytheon, sign a... a receipt to start getting a $370,000 salary, but all they're doing is they're essentially brokering introductions and contracts with whoever's still inside the building. Mm. It should one, it should absolutely be illegal. <laughs> <laughs>